Hello and welcome to CBC Arts Exhibitionists. I'm your host, Amanda Paris. Forget the roses and the chocolates. I'm interested in the passion. To celebrate Valentine's Day, I have one very important question. What is the one thing in the world that gets your heart pumping? Today's episode is filled with artists who are deeply passionate about creating, innovating, saving, and celebrating something. Today you'll meet an artist who migrates with the butterflies he's determined to save, the actor whose serenade has been named the most romantic scene on TV, a drag queen who doesn't let three jobs get in the way of her desire to perform, and a small town obsessed with a very big lamp. It's 30 minutes of passion. I hope you're ready for it because this is CBC Arts Exhibitionist. <laughs> When you love something, you want to protect it. David Romero fell in love with the monarch butterfly, and that love led him to structure his life around their seasonal migration. David follows their route from Mexico to Canada and back, using his multidisciplinary art to bring awareness to the threat of their extinction. It's no wonder his AKA is Lord Mariposa, which means Lord Butterfly. Take a look. The monarch butterfly is a very interesting species because it's considered an umbrella species. This means that when you take care of this specific insect, you can take care of an entire ecological community around it and you can help them thrive. My name is David J. Romero. I'm a filmmaker, painter and photographer. I am from Michoacán, Mexico, where the monarch butterflies go to hibernate every winter. Michoacán is a very large state in Mexico and is known worldwide by its sanctuaries. Millions of monarch butterflies from all over Canada fly to this specific region in Michoacan. Right now we are in the monarch butterfly reserve, El Rosario. The monarch butterfly reserve is a protected area in Mexico along the central volcano belt. And it's very special because scientists don't know how, but the monarch butterflies always go back to the same spot. The first time I worked with monarch butterflies is when I wanted to recreate an artistic representation of the sanctuaries in Montreal. I started by creating these butterflies with acetate film, which was the, the, the medium I was working with. So you can see them as you will see them in the sanctuary. So I started traveling with my butterflies and I started positioning them on people. And I started taking pictures of them. So it, this became a symbol in my work. We are poner como. Ahí está. ¿Listo? Ok, te voy a poner tu carita así, así y ya. Ok, ¿listo? My little brother is seven years old, the same age I was when I saw the butterflies for the first time. I remember it was mind-blowing. I remember seeing millions of these fire-like creatures, like, flying all over. There were so many of them that we couldn't really speak because they would come into our mouths. For me, it was very important to show my brother what I have seen when I was a kid. Así que todas esas mariposas que ves ahí vienen volando desde Canadá a través de Estados Unidos y luego llegan a México. ¿Por qué tienen que viajar? Tienen que sobrevivir al invierno. El invierno en Canadá es muy frío, no frío como aquí. Y las mariposas son muy susceptibles a la temperatura. Y por eso vienen aquí y ahí es donde van a pasar todo el invierno, oh. hasta que se acaba la nieve. In 2012, the monarch butterfly population became endangered species. In 2013, 2014, I went back home after living in Canada for 13 years. And I noticed that there was a huge drop on the population. I was shocked. There was like nothing like I remembered. It was a very, very, very terrible scene. It was life-changing. That moment, I had to stop everything and do something about it. So I started documenting the monarch butterfly sanctuaries in Mexico. I co-founded an international NGO with my sister called Todos Somos Mariposas. We are all butterflies. We aim to protect and promote the monarch butterfly migration by pollinating grassroots projects that combine art and science 
along the migratory route. The first objective I have with my art projects is to plant a seed in people's minds. So they start asking the question about this specific insect. They travel 4,500 kilometers from Canada to Mexico with tissue paper wings. They are so vulnerable, but at the same time, they are so resilient. And it's so important to look at them with wonder so you can start looking back into your own life and question your own decisions and, and see what you can do. Hey, I'm Voids and I'm this week's Exhibitionist in Residence. I'm a digital artist from Toronto that uses video and 3D animation to mess with reality and give the city's urban landscape a surrealist makeover. All of my art lives online in a space somewhere in between digital art and internet culture. Some pieces I like to think of as mixed reality eye candy, while others are a bit more conceptual. If you're wondering why my voice sounds weird, it's because I do this art anonymously. If you'd like to follow along, follow me on Instagram at VoidsTO. Take a look and enjoy. Coming up, we ask Noah Reed from Schitt's Creek to give us his roundup of best love songs. Spoiler alert, they're all Canadian. When Patrick serenaded David with his acoustic guitar cover of Simply the Best, Schitt's Creek fans around the world swooned, and audiences agreed we'd all just witnessed one of the most romantic scenes in television history. Noah Reed, who plays Patrick, is also a musician, so we figured he was the best expert to curate the perfect soundtrack for your romantic weekend. They're not my favorite songs to play most of the time because I'm like, I would rather play the angry song that's easier to access than like the, the soft heart place, you know? Um, but that's just me, that's my stuff to work on. The first one that pops to mind to me when I'm talking about like top love songs um, and it's been endlessly covered and nobody has gotten it the way that she did, uh, Joni Mitchell's A Case of You. What the central metaphor of like, I could drink a case of you and still be on my feet. I just think it's such a great lyrical turn and the music is so beautiful. Her voice is incredible. A little bit more of a melancholy take to my taste. Leonard Cohen's Hey That's No Way to Say Goodbye. Eyes are soft with sorrow. Hey that's no way to say goodbye. It's a goodbye song, but it's like, it feels like there's a lot of love in it still. Your hair upon the pillow like a sleepy golden storm. Like, I don't know where you, where Leonard was getting this stuff. Just some of those little, like, even the backing vocals on the recording of that song, those little bum, ba -da 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 -da. I would be in trouble with my, uh, with my partner Claire if I did not bring this one up. Um, of course, the great Shania Twain Still the one. That feeling of like against the odds, you know, two people finding each other, all the other stuff in life, all the people, you know, talking about you, or, you know whatever their opinions might be, and it doesn't matter when you're within that relationship. You're just like, we're here and that's all we need. It's a massive, massive track, big tune. We always sing that song like driving and I will do the high harmony on the chorus. It's that like, still the wine, and then you just hold it through the entire thing, and then you come down on the two. two. 
It's great. Yeah. God, great backing vocals on that track. The fact that his list is all CanCon as well? Gold star for Noah. There are the lucky few who get to do their passions full time. For the rest of us, we have to squeeze it into a busy schedule of jobs, school, family, and more. Francesca Dynamites works three jobs and then comes home to create incredible set pieces, choreograph serious dance numbers, and spend hours on her makeup, all to perform as one of Lethbridge, Alberta's most celebrated drag performers. Her hustle is inspiring. Meet Francesca. People were asking, what is her name? You should call her something bomb, explosive, like a dynamite. And I said, I like the word dynamites. I have a first name, Francis. I like to have a first name and last name. When I was in the Philippines, they tried to tease me by changing my name from masculine to feminine. So, oh, Francesca, Cheska. They're outing me in the public by calling me Francesca. You know what? I'm going to use that name from Francis to Francesca and make it Francesca Dynamite. <laughs> My name is Francis Utrago, and my drag name is Francesca Dynamites, and I'm from Lethbridge, Alberta. Can you hold it, buddy? So, let's stand on that side. So, when I stand here, I'm doing my lip sync and trying to connect the audience, I slowly pull the string, and then this box will open, and the flower will come down to my face. That will I'm originally from Dinagat Island, Philippines. I moved here year 2010 as a foreign worker under live-in caregiver program. The reason I leave from the Philippines to Canada because of the work. Because back in the Philippines, I have to work eight hours and you just make $10 or $11, and that's not enough. Now that I'm in Lethbridge, I work three jobs. I work in a nursing home, in a fast food chain, and in uh, janitorial services. I'm able to support my family, to pay their bills, their food, and medication for my mom, and pay the tuition fee of my brothers. And I'm slowly going out. Me and Cody met through an online dating site, and our first date told me that he likes photographies, and I asked him, can you take a, a professional photo of me? And then I said, I, I need this photo because I want to send it to my mom and dad. It's been a more than a year that I haven't seen my mom and dad, and my mom probably would happy to see my nice photo, so that's our first date. Well, I've been closeted back in the Philippines. I'm not that really out. Only few people know that I'm gay. Before I moved to Canada, I already know that in Canada, the gay people are accepted. But it does, it, it takes me a while to feel it and understand the culture of the LGBT because I've never been into the pride. The, 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 it feels like LGBT in the Philippines, like a second class citizen, like, you know, they treat, they treat us differently. But it's here, you can really fight back if you really wanted to. But it took me a while to learn that because I'm still in the closet in my first two years here in Canada. Before I come out in public, I started volunteering in the Lethbridge Pride Society. I perform, but I was still a masculine guy that time, like, you know, performing in a hip hop or modern. And then few people were starting to notice me, oh, he's a. She's a gay boy, and yes, I am. So it gives me more confidence, and people are happy to see that, oh, he's starting to get out of the closet. And then by 2014, that's when I come out in public. I didn't say I'm gay, I just dress up, put my hair and makeup, and perform the first Tabor Pride. And that's it, no question. Oh, she's a queen. My drag persona came from Beyonce. <laughs> I love listening R&B music back in the Philippines. And then when I saw Beyonce with the big hair, the way she moved me, that crazy in love music video, I said like, one day I'm gonna perform that. So that was my first drag performance number, Crazy in Love by Beyonce. And I love to dance. I love the Filipino culture. That's why I have this feathers, headpiece. I incorporate hip hop. I think, I plan, I choreograph, and I bring up props. Uh, layers of outfits to surprise the audience. See ya. Where's my key? Where's my key? Please welcome to the
the stage, my first guest, my love, Francesca Dynamo! When you're in the, in the drag community, in the LGBT bar and you're performing, people will just look at you like a star. They treat you differently. After performance, I got free drinks, but they, they, they just come to you, like they give you money, they appreciate you, like all they see is a beauty on you. All you heard is a positive, beautiful words. And it felt great. Like after two hours of doing your hair and makeup, it pays up. <laughs> because there's people like, you know, happy to see you, excited to see you. Now, See them happy and smiling, it makes you feel, feel you great. Like after two hours of doing your hair and makeup and performing for five minutes, it's worth it even if you don't get paid. Coming up, we head to a small Albertan town with a very large lamp and an even bigger lamp collection. We're in a small town in Alberta that doesn't usually get a lot of attention, but it should. It's home to the world's largest oil lamp. Welcome to Denalda, Alberta. They kind of look like bongs. I'm not, yeah. they, yes. they do. Denalda is a village in central Alberta and is home to 219 people. It sits on the edge of the Badlands overlooking the valley and right at the center is their world famous lamp. But why a lamp? It all started with a local couple and a small display that attracted the attention of the province. And people started coming to Denalda just to see that. Just to see the lamps. Just to see her little lamp collection. In the mid 1970s, they had a collection of approximately 500. When the collection became too much for them to maintain, they donated it to Denalda, who then made a museum just to house these antiques. What to do that might uh, make sense to carry on with getting tourists here? The museum at one time, a few years before that, had talked about maybe building a, a 12 foot high replica of a lamp and putting it in front of the museum on the lawn or whatever. 12 feet. 12 feet. So mm. they were kind of kicking this thing around and 12 feet didn't sound like much. So somebody <laughs> came up with a statement, what if we built a lamp that was the biggest lamp in the world? The museum now holds 1,100 oil lamps, some dating back to the 1600s. To their knowledge, it's the largest collection in the world. You may not know that these aren't real lamps. Yes, they're real lamps. So if you had somebody that was wanted to court you or date you or whatever, the dad would light the lamp. And of course, if you were brand new, it would be a very small lamp. When that lamp went out, it was time for you to go home. <laughs> what? So, so the more he liked you, the bigger the, the bigger lamp the got. Lamp. How long would that burn for? Probably just a few minutes, I'm sure. You might get a half an hour out of it. Sometimes that. a few minutes is all you need. That's right. All right. <laughs> so what do you think Donalda would be without these lamps? Where would you guys be today? I, myself personally, we would be lucky if we were still alive. Yeah. This does help <laughs> us. This is the original lamp committee. They built it in 2000 to celebrate the millennium, but it became much more important to the town than just a monument to mark a milestone in time. To be a part of something that has done for the community mm -hmm. what that lamp has done 
is a, a real honor to me, anyway, and I hope to everybody else. Giants of the prairies rising in the sky. This was my first time in Denalda, and had it not been for this project, I don't know if I ever would have heard of it. Coming across this massive lamp, I would have to say it's a must-see. This community is just so welcoming, it's quaint, and if people don't continue to go see it, it might not be around for much longer. Forget sliding into someone's DMs, let's bring back lighting lamps to holla at someone new. Anyone? No? Just me? That's cool. If you have an artist that you think should be on CBC Arts Exhibitionist, send me a message on social media. Our handle is at CBC Arts. Tune in next week when we'll be doing another deep dive into the captivating work of Canadian artists. Peace. Awesome show. Thank you. Nicely done. Thanks. Guess how many episodes we've done? A lot. I have no idea what the We've done is. 121 episodes of Exhibitionist. Damn, that is a lot. And we won't be doing 122 because it's your last day. My last day. I'm sad. You know, at the end of every episode, you say, if you know if any artist that you want to be on the show, let us know. Yeah. Well, I want to be on the show as an artist. So okay. that's why I'm going. I can't hate on that. That's That makes sense. That's okay. cool. And I know the host. You do. And I worked on the show you for did. 121 episodes. Uh -huh. So uh -huh. you can hook it up and I could be an artist on the show. I mean, after I see the art, I don't know if it's any good. So but I don't want to. You know me. I can't it's good. Make any promises, so you know. Bye. Bye. You guys are dumb. <laughs> you guys are dumb.